Hey guys, listen, this is the best art that you could ever learn to just not only be successful, but have an amazing quality of life. And most people think they've, they've mastered this art, but they don't even have a clue that they kind of, hate to use the word, but they suck. And they think that they're good. In fact, a lot of people upplay their skill set and if they really talk to somebody that's actually honest with them, if they tell them then they're good, that means usually you're, you're kind of bad because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. But all of us, myself included in this, can get better at this skill because it will help you in so many ways. And I actually wrote it down, so I'm going to be um, going back and forth, reading a little bit of the stuff that I actually wrote down so I don't forget some of the stuff that's so critical to you, help you. In, in your life and it's really it's the art of listening so one of the best skills really that a person can have is this art and believe it or not I can almost tell you that everybody I've had people that are like the worst listeners uh, that have worked for me and they think they're great and that I've even had them rate how great of a listener they were on a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, and they wrote it, rated themselves like 12, okay? So everybody, a lot of times, they think they're, they're great listeners, but we're going to find out in a minute how good of a listener you are. You might, you might want to rate yourself now, and then you might change it after the time when I talk about really how to rate yourself of listening. So an easy way to know if you're a great listener is just like I said, is simply ask somebody that's truthful to you, that's honest. And bottom line, if whatever they tell you, mark it down a little bit of score because they're not going to want to hurt your feelings, okay? So let's just talk about some things that we need to practice on to become great communicators and really improve our listening skills. So part of listening skills is very important is the feeling that you leave people with. That's critical, okay? That is really critical, the feeling that you leave people with, okay? Very, very important. I want you to think about that because there are some things that you can do right now that can really affect people's feelings towards you. And obviously, you want them to feel good uh, when you're talking and when they're actually talking and they're listening and you're having a dialogue because if they're not feeling good and you're not leaving them with a good feeling, they're not going to want to talk to you. They're not really not going to open up, am I? Am I right? Okay, so let's look at the first thing. Let's, the first one we're going to look at, we want to look at your body language, okay? Make sure you know how your body looks like. Look, if you're a big burly guy with big muscles and you're sitting there standing rigid and stiff, the other person might get a little intimidated and they're going to become a little rigid and stiff. So you want to be aware of your particular body type and how you may, may make other people feel as well when you are communicating with them, okay? So I know for myself, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm muscular. I don't want to intimidate somebody. So I've got to look more relaxed and be more on the beach and something so that people are actually more opened up to me. But look at your body language. The other thing is when, you're look, when we're talking about looking at your body language, don't just look at your body language. Make sure that your body also and your facial expressions match what the person that you're talking to. And so if you're looking really intense or you're, you've got a smirk on your face, the other person may, may read that incorrectly. Even though you, you meant well, um, if you've got a little smirk and it's inappropriate that you're smiling and you've, and you've got, you know, like frown on your face and so forth, like you're being cynical, even though you don't mean to be cynical, but you have a tendency to be that way with your voice, um, with your facial expressions, with your body language, you're pulling away from them and they're talking, you're, you know, you've got a different angle, a slightly different angle as you're speaking, it, you know, you might be turning your head a little bit, that's kind of indicating to them that you might have, you know, they, they might have bad breath. There's a lot of dynamics that's involved, so you really want to make sure that you're aware of your your facial expressions, your body language, and ask yourself, you know, if you were actually talking to yourself, is this someone that I would be open to talk to? Would I feel opening that they're listening to me, making me feel important, okay? So those are important things. So look at your body language, look at your facial language. The other thing is that a lot of times, which is a good idea, is when you're talking to somebody, is to be talking at their level, right? 
And so I might want to, you know, stand a particular way that I might mirror the other person, not like, you know, stalker mirror type, but just subtly. So if they've got their hand or the shoulder tilted and they're relaxed, I might tilt my head the other way, relax to show them that we're kind of mirroring each other, that, you know, we're, we're on the same wavelength. And that just makes people in general feel more comfortable when they feel like the person is more relatable. Okay, so don't, don't do it like excessive, but do it so there's this energy, you'll feel this invisible energy, like you're doing Tai Chi or something where you're flowing together with them in the conversation, with your body language, your facial expressions. So there is some kind of energy that's actually going through. through. The other thing is that a lot of people, unfortunately, they end up not doing is, is in listening that a lot of times people feel like they have to talk and it's good to talk but look guys you want to ask questions you want to get to know the other person and when you're asking questions you're not on jeopardy so don't ask 30 million questions because that's not going to be good either but you want to be sincere when you ask questions so you get a better understanding of that person and you get a better feel for that person um, and a lot of times, quite honestly, people love talking about themselves. They really do. And so if you're listening intently and you really want to listen, when you're asking the questions, that's going to make the person, person feel good. But if you're asking questions and you're not listening, you got a facial expression, you got body language, you're pulling away, you're yawning and all this other stuff, then they're not going to really feel good when, you're, when they're asking their questions either too. So be, definitely be conscious you know, of that, knowing that when you ask questions, that it's something that you sincerely want to get to know them at a deeper level. The other thing, when you're asking questions, you don't want to be asking too many questions that I had alluded to in the earlier because why? Because sometimes there's a flow in a conversation, right? Like water, it's amazing. You're going to flow through rocks and crevices and so forth. So you, you kind of want to be like that water. But if you, every single time you're asking questions and you're stopping, then it's gonna cause the decreased flow of the water, of the energy as you're talking to somebody. You know, in, in um, the medical literature, guys, there's a, a thing, it's called the Kegels exercise that helps actually improve sexual performance for men and for women. And one of the techniques that they actually use to help strengthen the muscle is a person urinates and then stops and urinates and stops and that teaches them how to control that particular muscle. Now, with that said, if they urinate and stop, urinate and stop, sometimes it becomes very difficult to get a, a quick, clean stream because they've urinated and stopped, urinated and stopped so often. And so bottom line, why am I telling you that? If you're asking a bunch of questions, it's, it's really, it's kind of like you're urinating over the conversation because you're making it difficult to start and stop, start and stop. So be careful asking questions but don't ask too many questions but ask enough where you're, where the conversation is flowing okay the other thing is you've noticed that little wording that i used you know i use different vocabulary sometimes that's important too uh, because it gets people to wake up a little bit and so sometimes you do want to use words that are more powerful words so you're making more of an impact on when you are actually speaking to them and you're listening to them as well too the other thing is, is that, you know, when you look at a lot of, uh, I guess, top salespeople, um, one of the reasons why they are so top is because, bam, they can execute. And their driver personality, they get the job done, they don't delay. And that's one of the reasons why they become top in their field and so forth. But what you have to watch out for if you have that personality is you want to be careful of when you're talking to someone and you're trying to relay information back that you're saying something like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I got it. Yep, let's go. I got it. I got it. Because even though you mean well, you're saying I got it, what you're really doing is you're pushing that person forward and you're basically saying you're talking too much. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Move forward. And the other person may feel a little bit uncomfortable with you when you start doing that and then they're not gonna open up to you. And so then some of the words that they're actually saying, they're not really saying what they're actually saying. And so you've gotta be a little careful that you don't nudge too much. You gotta guide the conversation, but you don't wanna to nudge too much. Ultimately, you wanna really be, you know, you wanna be genuine. You wanna know their concerns. 
and you want to be um, a person that really does care about what they're saying. And, and that's something that you just can't fake um, no matter what you say. You know, people, there's an, uh, there's, when you're having a conversation with somebody, there's you, then there's the other person, and guess what? Then there's an invisible person there that understands everything, and they know if you're faking it or if you're not. So be careful with, you know, just trying to appease people. Be genuine. Look into your heart when you are talking to people, okay? It's very important. Be authentic. Talk to people as if your heart had lips, and then listen if your heart had ears. So that way you're really communicating at a very good level with them. I also want to look at um, my ratios. You know, that I'm, when I'm talking to somebody, sometimes people have a tendency to think that a conversation has to be a 50-50 split. It doesn't have to be a 50-50 split. Sometimes you're talking more, sometimes you're talking less, but in the majority of cases, when you're really getting to know somebody, you're actually talking less. And so don't make it a 50-50 split. Be relatable. If they're talking about exercise, you want to obviously talk about exercise. If they're talking about something, um, another conversation, watch the emotion in that conversation that they're having because those emotions will tell you a lot of times not necessarily what they're saying, but the words behind what they're saying of what they're really passionate about. And that'll give you a lot of information. So you might be passionate about that as well. And you have more things to be relating to when you're talking to somebody. So be aware of all those little factors. Okay. Now, there are other things that I can definitely go into that, you know, every human being really does have certain language patterns that they repeatedly use more often. And so typically, you we want to be relatable to the person that we're talking to, you know, in the speaking world. There's an old saying that, that you should know your audience and so that you're talking to your audience the way your audience would like to listen. So it's going to be relatable. So there's going to be a different way if I'm speaking to a bunch of pastors, how I'm going to talk than if I'm talking to some NFL football players. I'm going to talk a little bit differently. My body language is going to be a little differently. You get the point? And so just be aware of who you're talking to and what their body language is, who they are as a person, how their voice is, how their voice fluctuation is, and be relatable so that you are talking to your audience, even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. The other thing you want to be careful is that uh, be careful in projecting what the other person is going to say. You got to be careful about that because sometimes when we're projecting what the other person is going to say, we end up completing what they're going to say. And so that doesn't make the other person that's talking very good if you're completing their sentences or you're, you're nodding like, yeah, yeah, you know what they're going to say. And so you just kind of finish up what they were going to say because you already knew what they were going to say. That's not going to win you a lot of points when you're trying to have a conversation with somebody. So be patient and listen, even though you know what you're, they're going to say, just still be patient and don't nudge them along the way. Okay. Um, Again, I want to overemphasize that being genuine is really, really important. Like you can't fake, you can't fake, you can't fake that, okay? The other thing I want to let you guys know is that when you are communicating, you know, it's true, the guy with the higher energy is going to win. But when you're in a conversation, you're not trying to win. You're just trying to communicate. You're trying to get to know each other. So match your energy with the person that you're talking to. Okay, don't be over the top and be excited and be powerful. Uh, there is a time and a place for that, but match your energy so that you guys are having dialogue with one another. That's really important, right? Now, guys, there is a lot more stuff that I can give you on communication. And so, hey, if you want to know more, hit me up, let me know. But the other thing is that do me a favor. If you're getting a lot out of the content that I'm giving for you, you know, like you've heard me say before, you're not going to get this in Harvard or Yale. You're getting this from, from, from years and years of, of study and stuff that I've seen work and not work. And so guys, if you're getting benefit from this, do me a favor, 
you know, share the information because if you're getting a benefit, somebody else is going to get a benefit too. And realize I don't get paid one dime for doing this stuff. You know, I'm here, it's 1240 at nighttime, believe it or not. And I'm here right now trying to serve you at the highest level possible because I know there are people out there that are not as successful as they could be just because they didn't have the money or they didn't have the education or they didn't get the training or they never found somebody that could actually help them. And so, you know what? One of the greatest fulfillments that I actually have is just how, trying to help somebody. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help somebody that needs that needs help that doesn't always have the right tools or the access. And this stuff you would really literally pay thousands of dollars for that you're getting for free. So guys, make sure you share it if you're getting something out of it because there are other people that could benefit from that as well too. And lastly, I do want to get to know you. And so if you make a comment, that'd be great. I would love to, I answer every single comment and, and, and that gets me to get to know you actually a little bit better as well too. And lastly, guys, I'm trying to build a community because there's so much negative stuff out there today. And I'm hoping that the people that are making comments that they communicate with, you guys communicate with, you, with each other. And we all keep this positive and feed each other positive, healthy, good stuff. And we don't get caught up on all the negative and of the world and the, and the, the breakdown of what's really happening with some of the communities that I've actually seen that we're here to support each other whatever nationality, whatever religion, whatever race or color that we're at, that we're here to support each other as teammates, as, as, as a bond to build each other and help each other just do better in life. And so guys, you know, I appreciate your shares. I appreciate your comments and I appreciate your communication back and forth and, and definitely subscribe because I'm always making new content all the time. And that helps me stay motivated when I see somebody new and making a comment. It stays me motivated to stay out here at 12, you know, 43 at nighttime making these videos for you. All right, guys, take care.